Hey everyone, and welcome to days 12 and 13 of our RV10 build. Today we are continuing work on the rudder. So yesterday we'd finished uh, attaching all of the stiffeners to the right skin, and now we had to go in and finish attaching the stiffeners to the left skin to move forward. And remember what I mentioned in the previous video here where you can see that I am clicking every other hole in the stiffeners. This wasn't necessary. You can just put all of them in at once, then put the tape down an entire stiffener and just do all of them at the same time because it's a flat surface. And since this is a one person job, we went ahead and Tyler started working on the horizontal stabilizer. So as you can see, we got one of the big spar pieces in here and it's just kind of exciting because I think it's the biggest piece so far that we've been working on. So Ty is over in the back now deburring the edges of some of the pieces that he's going to be using while I sit here and finish attaching the stiffeners to the left skin uh, for the rudder. So just to trying again to make the most of all of our time and uh, not have one person just sitting around waiting. Now you can see that there's one stiffener that is missing here on the left skin. That was uh, mentioned in a previous video. I'll put the link below, but that's the one where it uh, accidentally got bent while uh, it was being counter, uh, sorry, dimpled. And so that's why that part there is being left blank until we get the new part in from Vans and get that squared away. So uh, now Tyler's there working on the um, rear spar for the horizontal stabilizer in the back and deburring and I am attaching the parts of the top rib, one of the halves of the top rib, to that left skin and then have to go and do the same thing now on the right skin, attach the top half. And those are kept separate because as you attach the trailing edge wedge, um, they, it's gonna kind of like zipper together as it goes. So that's why they're kept separate and not attached until later. And yes, you can see having a good time goofing around with the, the big pieces of the, the spar there for the horizontal stabilizer. You know, gotta have fun while you're doing all this, so. Um, so now that the top rib halves have been attached, the next step was to install the bottom rib, which is the Imperial Destroyer I mentioned in the previous video. This is where we ran into a little bit of a snag. It was very, very narrow at the tip, and the instructions called for using an AN426 AD 3-3.5 uh, rivet, um, but after already having riveted those two bottom uh, rib halves together, there really wasn't enough space to get um, our squeezer, the, the manic squeezer in there, or any of our bucking bars, despite all of my best efforts. And so since it was getting late and getting a little frustrated with trying to figure out how to make this work, we decided the best thing was to stop for the day and do some research online and try to figure out how we could go ahead and install those rivets. And now we're moving into day 13, and as you might notice, everything's a little bit different. I started shooting video instead of doing all of the photos for a time lapse, um, just because figured this way it might be a little bit easier to make comments or mention things as we come across them while we're working on them. And also I think it looks a little bit better now than having all of the stop motion with the photos. So let me know what you think, but hopefully I think it looks a little bit nicer. Back to the situation at hand, which is trying to get those rivets into that tiny little spot. After we went in that night, we looked around online and tried to find a solution to the problem since we didn't yet have our technical advisor to reach out to. And we found two different methods that we decided to try that we thought were gonna help. The first one involved just getting a piece of thin steel and using it as a bucking bar to try and install the rivet. All this did was then give us something that was thinner than the bucking bars, the tungsten bucking bars that we already had, and it seemed like a easy enough solution. So we went out and got a thin piece of steel uh, at the hardware store, and Tyler went on the bench grinder and had to grind it down a little bit because it was still too thick, 
but we decided to go and take a stab at that. So ground it down, got it to fit in there, set everything up, and it didn't work. And I, we tried a couple different times, but nothing we did got those uh, rivets in there, and we decided that this was not working and was just gonna be a waste. So drilled out those rivets <laughs> and decided to try option two which was from an EAA video we saw called uh, Indirect Riveting Technique. And I will put a link for it below. You, I think, have to be a member uh, to access it on the website because it's not like on YouTube, it's on their actual website. But I will put the link below for you to try to get access to it. I tried to explain in the video while we were filming what we were doing, but the audio just didn't come through very well, so I'm just going to explain it to you here in the little voiceover. What that video suggested, it's a back riveting technique where you would, we in this case we put the skin down against a, a back riveting plate, and then what you do is with the rivet installed there, you take that thin piece of steel that can fit into the gap and you put the rivet gun down, you put the steel on top of the back of the rivet, you put the rivet gun down on top of the steel as close as you can to the rivet, and then you use the rivet gun on that little piece of steel to then try to pound the rivet in there. And we tried that three or four times, and the first time it just slid right off of the rivet, and it looked like it cracked it, and so I said, okay, this isn't working, and tried it again, taped it down to the, the back rivet plate so it sat really flush, and the next time what happened is that it started, the rivet wouldn't sit flush in the skin, so it ended up sort of starting to create that chop head, but it was not, um, it wasn't flush against the skin, so that didn't work. So I had to drill that out, try to get Tyler in and have him hold it down uh, to make sure it stayed flush against the back rivet plate while I did it, and it just, none of it worked, no matter which way we tried to do it. And at this point, we're like, okay, we need, <laughs> we need to come up with a solution. The solution we came up with was to um, drill out a couple of the rivets, I think it was three, that were holding the two bottom rib halves together there at the tip. Because once we were able to separate the two rib halves, we could move the one just enough so that we could then go and back rivet as normal um, those two rivets there at the tip. And then we went and riveted the two halves back together. If I were to do this again, and please keep in mind, these are not instructional videos. I am not an expert. This is our very first plane. I am just providing the feedback and insight on what our experiences are. If I were to do it again, I would do one of two things. I would either A, use the pop rivets, which we didn't because we were trying at the time to follow the instructions, which specifically called for that 3-3.5 rivet and specifically said, that the pop rivets were only for on the uh, other skin to use, but I would probably just go and use that because I think it, it would have been easier and we could have just kept following along with the, the steps there. But the other thing that I might have done is instead uh, do on the bottom rib like with the top rib and keep the two halves separate and then hold off on installing the final stiffener down there at the bottom, the very bottom one, and then taking the half of the bottom rib that needed to be applied to the right skin and install that, and then rivet the two halves of the bottom rib together, and after that, then go in and rivet the uh, final stiffener there on the bottom, and that, I think, would have avoided any of the problems with the tight spaces. Again, just my opinion based on our experience. So I would have done one of those two things if I were to have to go back and do this again. But in the end, we did get it. We got it riveted. We got the halves put back together. And so it looked like it was supposed to. And we had the rivets in there that were called for the instructions. It just took 
a lot of time, a lot of patience, and a lot of different tries in order to make it work. So wanted to share that with y'all for any of you who might be coming up on that step. I'm really curious. I would love to hear from the rest of you who have done this before who are watching. What did you do that was able to work? Because <laughs> nothing that we had and nothing that we tried got that, uh, that rivet installed in there. Uh, until we went and separated those halves just to create enough space to back rivet it as normal. So please leave me a comment below, reach out, let me know. I'd love to know because obviously this isn't going to be the only little tight space that we're going to be working in on the plane and it would be good to know from y'all any of your feedback um, that might help us in the future on different parts. In this next part, we're about to install a bunch of pop rivets, which I don't think we've done before and I don't think I have explained before. And so I wanted to do a little introductory video uh, for anybody who isn't familiar with these, just so you understand what I'm talking about and what we're doing. Okay, so I'm about to talk about a new kind of rivet that we haven't used before and I just wanted to go over it for anybody who wasn't familiar. So up to now, we've been using these rivets here. Um, either the universal or the countersunk ones, which I talked about in another video, where you would either put um, the, the bucking bar on the shop head and then use the rivet gun on the factory head, or um, you could uh, use it if you had a countersunk rivet where you would back rivet it on this side instead um, and use a back riveting plate on the countersunk head. So. But this is what we've been using so far. And this here uh, is a pop rivet or a back rivet. And these work slightly differently where instead of the idea being that you're pushing, like on this one, you're either pushing on this side to create the rivet or pushing on that side. Um, here it's a pulling. And so there is this basically a nail that comes through the center and right here at the tip this is the very end of that nail and so the rest of this is the rivet part here and so what happens is when you use either the manual or pneumatic um, rivet gun for this type of a rivet what it does instead of you pushing on either side is it pulls at this pin here and so when it pulls on this pin, that head there of the pin is gonna start squeezing and compressing against um, the rest of this rivet here. And so what that's gonna do is squish it down until it gets to the point where the tensile strength of this um, stem here is exceeded and then this is gonna snap off. And so when that uh, snaps off, then this little head of the nail is going to be embedded here in the shop head of this rivet and it will look very similar, pretty much the same as how the, the other ones look. So you'd have the, the factory head on this side and the shop head here. So I'm gonna have a little video that's gonna show how um, it actually looks when we're working on it with um, one of the um, manual rivet guns for this, but I just wanted to kind of explain the difference and show you um, what it looks like and how it works beforehand. So hopefully that makes sense and you'll see more in the next part of the video. So those are pop rivets and hopefully that makes sense about how it works and seeing the little demo there with a little close up which we took while we were installing these shear clips and so that was the next step was installing the shear clips to all of the stiffeners and that was the end of our day. It's a shame it took as long as it did trying to get those two rivets installed there at the bottom rib but that is just part of the whole process, I guess. You know, you're gonna run into the snags and try and figure out how to work with them. So, very thankful now that we have the different technical advisors here in the area, as well as the other builders who we can reach out to whenever we come across um, other little hiccups in the future. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And again, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any tips or suggestions or if you have any questions.